Hi there, let's deal with plant reproduction part two and we're going to focus in on asexual reproduction which if you remember that's reproduction where one plant can produce brand new plants. We looked at the parts to a flower so flowers and cones are part of what we call sexual reproduction in plants and that creates a seed and that new seed is a little bit different Vegetative reproduction is another term for plant asexual reproduction. So this is when one plant creates essentially a copy of itself. So the new plant is an identical version of the original plant. And plants are really good at this. They can take one plant and make new plants several ways. One is called runners. So these are underground uh, stems that come across or roots and they pop up new plants. And so this baby plant here that I'm drawing or pointing at, it's identical to its parent. Here's another runner. And so strawberry plants are a good example of how runners work. This is called a cutting. So you can take a branch from a stem, uh, from, or a stem from a plant and you can stick it in water and certain plants will create roots and they'll grow a whole new copy of the plant. These are called shoots and this is a spider plant. Spider plants create little baby plants off their stems. These are called shoots. That's a baby plant. There's a baby plant. Uh, so there are several types of reproduction. Sexual reproduction as you know involves two parents and that's pollen and eggs from the ovule and that makes a new individual. Asexual reproduction is just one parent, no sex cells involved. Examples, tubers, bulbs, runners. Here are some examples of tubers. They're underground food storage. And potatoes are examples, yams, and so on. And so what can happen is we can slice this in half and take this and plant it somewhere else and it'll grow a whole new plant. Arrowroot is another example. Thickened underground stem that will create a whole new plant. Bulbs like tulips also. Bulbs have underground food storage which work like tubers. The difference is that bulbs are fleshy leaves. Runners are side shoots which grow from the parent plant. The buds form at points along the way, so I talked about runners before. Spider plant, strawberry plant. So let's talk about the advantages to asexual versus sexual reproduction. For asexual, they're genetically the same. The offspring are essentially clones. And if the organism is suited for the environment, this allows them to reproduce and basically propagate the environment really quickly. However, if the environment changes, all these organisms, because they're identical, could die out. For example, if you had a field full of plants and they all had short roots and it, that was okay because it rained lots, then all of a sudden a drought hits the area and it needs long tap roots and all the plants with the short roots would all die out. Sexual reproduction, which involves two parents, the offspring look a little bit different. There's variation there. And so this is a greater chance that they're going to survive when conditions start to change. However, it takes time, this kind of reproduction. Let's talk about, we've talked about cuttings, so you can make a cutting of a plant. So here's some examples of cuttings or plants that can do that. Geraniums, okay, cuttings are small pieces of the stem. The leaves are usually attached and a plant can grow from this. Grafting is a stem of one plant with good flower or fruit and it's grafted or almost like glued onto another plant and you kind of get a hybrid plant. Advantages, this allows you to clone commercial quantities of a particular fruit. 
Uh, seed trees have highly variable fruit quality. So artificial propagation allows us to adapt and improve plants for our own uses. Quick reproduction, large numbers, you can get certain varieties, etc. How many parents are involved in asexual reproduction? One. Give three ways plants produce asexually. Runners, tubers, bulbs. Give two examples of plants that produce by runners. Spider plant and a strawberry plant. Which term is used to describe population of genetically identical plants? They're clones. Name two methods of artificial propagation, cuttings and graftings. Give advantages. It's quick. Produces large numbers. Another way we reproduce is something called selective breeding. So humans can basically pick traits in plants that they find desirable and then just reproduce. Take the pollen from one plant and cause it to reproduce to another. And this is done lots in the animal world. For example, hens. Here are three hens. Let's say this hen makes 160 eggs. Well, it's sort of the best at making eggs, so we would pick this hen to reproduce new, new babies. And let's say this one makes 100, 194 eggs. This hen grows up, and it's a really good egg layer. We would only reproduce it with a rooster and so on. So we artificially select. Let's look at the brain pop on asexual reproduction. Can you reach the milk? Tim and Moby. Can you tell the difference between a male amoeba and a female amoeba? From Jerry. No, it's not a riddle, Moby. Amoebas don't have males and females. They reproduce asexually, meaning without sex. Okay, have your laugh. Asexual reproduction is pretty common among plants and simple animals. In some plants, like the strawberry, the stem extends away from the parent plant, with child plants growing all along it. Aspen and poplar trees do the same thing with their roots, shooting them out in all directions to grow new trees. A single grove of trees like these might all come from one parent. Farmers have asexually reproduced plants for thousands of years by taking cuttings from one and replanting them. However asexual reproduction is done, the children plants are always genetically identical to the parent plant. So they're actually clones. Clones share the same genetic information, but parents and their sexually reproduced offspring do not. In sexual reproduction, a female egg cell is fertilized by a male sperm cell. Each cell contains a half set of the parent's chromosomes, or genes. When the two cells combine, the genes do too, making a unique new individual. But in asexual reproduction, the parent's genes simply split in two. In eukaryotes, organisms with nuclei in their cells, the chromosomes replicate through mitosis. That's the process of cell division that goes on all the time in your body. In most prokaryotes, organisms without nuclei, the chromosomes replicate through a similar process called binary fission. Bacteria are prokaryotes that reproduce this way. Some animals can reproduce asexually by a neat little process called budding. In budding, a child organism develops as a growth on the parent's body. In some animals, like the yeast here, the bud falls off and becomes an independent creature. In other animals, like corals, the buds stay put, just one more clone rooted to the entire colony. And you've probably heard about how a starfish that gets its arm cut off will grow back a new one. That's a process called regeneration, which in certain cases is a form of asexual